Hey guys, we're back. Uh, we're doing brakes today. Specifically, we're doing rear brakes. We're doing drum brakes uh, to be absolutely specific. So come in tight. I'll show you what we got here. We have our new brake shoes. Look nice. Good thickness right there. Uh, good. Rear brake drums are very complicated. So I have the hardware kit for both side driver and passenger. See all the springs. We're gonna need that. We're also replacing the wheel cylinders uh, because they were leaking action on both sides. So for that, make sure if you do anything brake wise, my thing is to, you should have a mask. Uh, you know, these things can get, uh, all the brake dust can get in your, your nasal cavities and make you be blowing black boogers, things like that. Have some uh, brake clean because nine times out of 10, brake drums are usually dirty. So let's come in tight here. This is the brake drum. We talked about this in another video. Uh, it doesn't come stock red. It was painted that way. We have weights on here for balancing. And these fins are also here to help. Okay, cool. so here are the tools that I'll be using today. I got my little pusher tool, I have my needle nose, I got my cutters, and I have my angled pliers here. There are more specific tools that you need to uh, have to do this more efficiently, but you still can get the job done with what I have here. Again, I say more efficiently because there are specific tools. I used to have them, but like a young man, I wanted something more cool, so I traded those tools in for something else. So I'll be starting with taking these pin, these uh, push springs out right here. So I'll try to get a better view of it. This right here. And then you see that little shiny piece in the middle. That's a pin that goes in the back. It goes, it's like right back here on the backing plate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tool and push this in and put my finger back here to hold the spring. But as you can see, this isn't large enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flip it around, right? Now I can come in here, get a good grip on it, push, twist, and that spring will come out. Boom, perfect. And I can push this pin out the back. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and continue doing the, uh, the springs from there as I go. So I might as well, I might as well continue this and leave it on. There we go. Perfect. Same thing on this side done. Perfecto. And I'm gonna put everything on the side. I'm not really just gonna to toss it just yet because you never know if I need it or not. So, guess this real quick. I had to pick up this little uh, torch here because the, uh, the rear bolt to the uh, wheel cylinder is frozen. I hit it with penetrant and I was like, okay, I'm gonna come back the next day. It, it was starting to strip when I put my wrench and my line wrench on there. So this is kind of my last option. I do have this. Also, I do have my uh, fire extinguisher for safety. You just wanna have it there just in case. So, so this that is, not the is what I'm talking about right here. This, uh, where this line is going in, that's a 7 16th. A uh, nut that I'm having some trouble with. <clears throat> so I do have my fire extinguisher and my blowtorch. I have some very clean rags. <laughs> right? In case anything happens, I can smother it. But I do have the fire extinguisher for me. <clears throat> so let me get this set up. And so that you guys can get some good action shots here. You know what I mean? There we go. Took a second. There you go, you see a little blue flame there. Theater season is dark. I don't want this thing to melt. I just want it to be warm, you know? Just enough so the metal expands. 
So I'm just kind of playing chicken with it. Hopefully I get it on the first try. Okay. Let that turn off. Grab my, well, I'm gonna make sure I turn this the right way. Let's see, right tidy, lefty loosey. Okay, so I'm on the right way. Oh, still nothing there. Okay, so I was able to get the line off right there. I'm pointing at it with my little Okay, pointer. look I what decided to finally come out after a whole heck of a lot of fight. And I mean a whole lot. Ooh. <laughs> There's a little extra uh, fluid left in there, huh? So anyways, we are replacing this. This is what the old one looks like. Before I move further on, I wanted to make something you know, abundantly clear that uh, with shoes, right, rear uh, drum brake shoes, that there is a primary and secondary shoe. I don't know if you can tell the difference just by looking at it, one is larger than the other. The front one is smaller and the uh, rear one is uh, larger. Not really in thickness, but mainly in length. Uh, you know, insert joke there. So anyways, uh, you can see how far the rear shoe goes down versus the front. So just make sure when you're putting it back on here that the shorter one goes here and the longer one goes in the back. So what you're looking at here is some makeshift holding equipment, uh, vice grips and the uh, wrench. I'm not gonna use my good snap-on wrench to do this, but I'd rather use my old Craftsman one. Anyways, right, sorry so... not to get a uh, better angle with my uh, zoom out. So this clip right here, I gotta push it in. So that's why I needed the outside to be uh, pressed on while I push these clips in to these retaining areas. So it holds the um, wheel cylinder in place and then I can tighten the uh, brake line down. So I just got it started, but uh, I don't want it to be uh, tightened all the way. Something I wanted to talk about now that I have the wheel cylinder on and then whatever the hell this is called, I, I just can't think of the name, uh, is take a look at your backing plate, okay? Take a good look at it and look at the wear right here. Here, here. And here, it's something I didn't address on the other side. That, right, is where your shoes sit when you put it on the backing plate. Now, why is it important? Why am I pointing this out? Well, brakes can squeak. They don't turn or anything like that, but they do expand, contract, expand, contract, and there can be a squeaking as they expand and contract. Well, this is something a buddy of mine showed me back in the day when I was working in the dealership world is to put a little, a little grease right there, a little grease right there, there, and there. I did that to the other side, but it was something I forgot to address because I was having a really bad day. So actually I might put a little right here too even. Uh, so, cause there's looks like there's a little bit of wear, but anyways, something to look at, something to think about, uh, about the future so that you don't have to come back here, take everything back off and do it later when you're like trying to chase a squeak noise in your brakes, whether it's the front, back, and or side to side so we're gonna do that now so here i have a can of spray paint it's a black aerosol spray, spray paint and i got this neat little device here that hooks up to it and makes it kind of like a little spray gun so if i do this correctly i can show you right there bang just like that and now if i hit this trigger i can spray something which I did over here on um, the uh, axle, so it looks nice. Take two, all right, here we go.
I think like most things on cars, especially, I think they would just look cooler in black. Very Batman-y, you know? So let me finish doing this and concentrate it with uh, both hands. A little before and after action. This is the uh, one I didn't paint. Here's the one I painted. Oh, does it look cooler? Looks cooler to me. I think it's got like a more, like a, you know, stealth, black tie event, you know, it's a white car, white on black. I think it looks good. I think it looks cool. I know the red's got a little racy style to it. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we have stayed with the red? or gone to black. Obviously, if we would have stayed with the red, we'd have repainted this, but I think the black looks cool. So here's the finished product. Got everything painted up so it looks nice and pretty. All the new springs, the new uh, wheel cylinder, everything, everything new. Uh, this was a, <laughs> this is something difficult. It's actually fought us every which way. So what I kind of want to show you is down here, if we can, we can talk about it. Let me see if it's showing on the camera. Yeah, right about here. See what my fingers pointing to down here? That's the little adjuster, right? And what you do is you adjust it out to push the uh, shoes out. And now while I'll do that, I'll put this on here. Put the drum on there. That way we also painted black. So it looks nice and slick. I think it does, right? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the car in neutral and you're gonna turn this around till there's a little bit of a scrape or didn't go just under that for the expansion of the shoe. And then you can adjust your rear brakes. And that way you're not have you're not gonna have any drag, but you're gonna be right before your brake application. So when you get, when you push your brake down, you get a nine, nice and firm application out of your rear brakes. Also what we need to do before we're done, after I do the front brakes, is we'll bleed out the, uh, the system to make sure there's no air in there. Also, when you adjust your rear brakes, <coughs> excuse me, is you're uh, adjusting your parking brake. So that's a little spring right here, this this wire, that is your uh, parking brake. So that gets adjusted too uh, as you adjust your shoes out for a normal brake application. But we're gonna end on a good note. We're gonna put our shoe back on here and I'll adjust this baby when we're all said and done with the brakes and getting ready to go on the ground. But as of right now, man, she looks good, doesn't she? Yeah.